Good evening as you join me today. This is my live broadcast on this day, uh, 20th of March, 2020. You are joining my live broadcast today, this Friday, this evening. Thank you for joining me as I will be the... Uh, the awareness for Nigeria disintegration, freedom of Biafra continues. We are not relenting as I wait for a reasonable number of people to join me this evening as I will be sharing this information and this awareness. Thank you, Ali Jude, for joining me. Thank you, Mwabweze Harry, for joining me. I will not take much of your time and I will not take much time to call the names, but I'm going to go straight to the point. Desmond Young, Ezenwa, thank you for joining me this evening. Augustine, thank you for joining me. Terry, thank you for joining me. Uh, Odinamaru, Ode, thank you for joining me. Prince Love Day, thank you for joining me. Godson, watching America, thank you for joining me this evening. Harry Amaje. Daniel Young, my own Daniel Young. Thank you for joining me. Nebuchuku, thank you for joining me. Biafra Land, thank you for joining me. Paul G. OKK, thank you for joining me. Uh, Effects Kennedy, thank you for joining me. Um, thank you for joining me. Also, Oliver E.K., thank you for joining me. Uche Lebosh, thank you for joining me. Ike David, thank you for joining me this evening. You are watching my live broadcast. You are watching my live broadcast on this day and it is time we go deeper. It is time we go deeper. We go deeper into breaking Nigeria. It is time we go deeper. I am going to be going deep from today. So most of you who will be privileged to watch this live, you'll be privileged to watch this uh, mind blowing and information I'm about to give this evening. You have to just sit down, watch, listen as I'm going to break some things into pieces that is going to make a lot, a lot, a lot of sense to you. Kelechi Obi, thank you for joining me. Ifan Obi, thank you for joining me. I see you. Simok Ani, thank you for joining me. Chiama the Fat Fan Tap, thank you for joining me. Chinelo Ezako, Chelsea, Ngozi Rosemary, thank you for joining me. Celeste in Chooks, thank you for joining me. Ike Chuku, watching from Germany, thank you for joining me. Okocha Israel, thank you for joining me. Church Hill, Paul G. OKK. Watching from Germany, Antonio Nora Ude Udo Ada, thank you for joining me. Yes, Andy Ibekwe, thank you for joining me as well this evening. Uh, good, uh, thank you from Malaysia, Victor Koye. Thank you for joining me this evening. Thank you all for joining me. I'm going to start very soon. I want to give a, a very big shout out to to IPOB Belgium, IPOB Belgium, the uh, indigenous people of Biafra in Belgium. I want to give you a very big shout out of the very big greetings this evening. And another greeting goes to my sister there, Ada Biafra. I want to give you a very good uh, uh, evening this today because you people are doing wonderful job. You people have done something very marvelously well during the barrier of the uh, leader of indigenous, indigenous people of Biafra, Belgium. Belgium, I'm giving you a shout out this evening. Of course, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, IPOBs all over the world. You people are doing wonderful job. I want to make something very clear to the entire world and to the entire Nigerians that are watching me. You do not need to be a member of IPOB to support them. What you have to do is to identify yourself that first of all, you are no longer happy with Nigeria. 
you just have to support if you don't want to be a member of ipob you just have to support give them support it might not be financial support it might also be financial support but give them support by not talking down on them these guys has done something very tremendously well and we ought to be recognizing and appreciating what they have done so far ipob has become the biggest platform for biafra referendum and biafra freedom and we need to always appreciate them people are sacrificing a lot people life has been sacrificed in this course and probably more will still come and they have not relented a lot of things has happened and for you to understand this ipob is the first the first biafra agitating group to be proscribed by nigeria government especially the terrorist nigeria government so to tell you that they have done something different from what other people has been doing they have ipob have broke the foundation of nigeria and of course what they have done so far other people have other agitators like mosob and other people they have also contributed and have done something wonderfully well but the fact is that the fact remaining they remain that the ipob has actually uprooted the taproot that is holding nigeria and that is why you see today all of us somebody like me i'm throwing my weight behind ipob and any other group at all that is genuine for them, for them becoming the first the first agitator in in the history of nigeria to be proscribed but through the fraudulent mean which i have always been calling for the uh, governors in biafra land to make sure that the the uh, prescription of uh, ipob indigenous people of biafra is uplifted especially within the region because this is an insult and a slap to biafra people prescribing ipob means that you are you allow these fulani people that come from west africa to prescribe your the, the indigenous people of biafra to prescribe your race to prescribe your ethnicity to prescribe everything about your your origin and it is really a big, very big slap on the governors of course we know we know the, the governors they don't they are not like representing the interests of people of biafra land and uh, but it, it that 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 will not uh, make us not to tell them directly to their face where they are misleading and doing something misleading the public or doing something against the interest of the people they are supposed to govern so the governors of the biafra land they must make sure that the prescription of ipob is lifted because i speak i'm not saying they should uh, they can allow fulanis to ban to continue to to uphold the uh, prescription of ipob but not in biafra land this is a very big insult and something i want to tell i want to th this broadcast today will touch a little bit why i started this broadcast with this uh, first opening statement about the prescription of ipob it will address a lot of things i may not be addressing directly uh, the issue concerning POB, ipob but the issue i am going to i'm going to address today will will touch uh, on these uh, areas that i'm talking now so now uh for those of you that i didn't call your name please uh, bear with me next time first of all uh most of you must have uh, must have seen the uh, the uh, the news going around uh, social media being shared on social media about about the uh, the statement uh, given by fulani uh, movement or whatever the name is called and they are threatening uh, yorubas and all that so i want to read that uh, statement to you people and then after that just have patience i'm going to read it as fast as i can and then after that I will, uh, I will, I will go straight to the point why I have come this evening to create this awareness so that people will understand the predicament that Nigeria is going through and the danger that is awaiting us in the south, south, in the southeast, and in the southwest, which is the south. Now, uh, what listening to what I am going to read now. This is. Uh, after the explosion in Lagos State, this Fulani movement have this to say. The Fulani Nationality Movement has this to say to Yorubas. We urge the Fulani people in Lagos and other South 
Western states to prepare for their own personal security and also their collective defense. The explosion in Lagos today, Sunday, should be a lesson to the Yoruba, to the Yoruba people who fail to realize that they are vulnerable more than the Fulani people. They are drumming self-determination, forgetting that when the real battle starts, their land will lay in ruin. Their industries built with Nigeria resources will not be spared. Their ports will be vanquished and their tall buildings are sunders. We suspect that Southern states will not cease witnessing one calamity or the other. That, that is the cause they have chosen on their own accord, setting up Amotekon and stopping the natural right of Fulani Hesmen have grave consequences. No one has ever done this with success. We have said it over and over that the Yoruba people will pay heavy prices for their, for their recalcitrant posture and their rigid pursuit of sovereign security as against the constitution of Nigeria. We wonder why didn't their so-called Amotecon prevent the explosion today? If they are so prepared, why didn't they see the sign of the explosion? We call on Fulani people in the South, West, and in the entire South to be vigilant. They must be prepared because the day is near. They should spare no one. They must fight an offensive and not defensive battle. Before I go forward, let me highlight this particular place. Now, you see, you see, uh, this is where I have to make some uh, comment before I continue reading this. You see, the Fulanese, like I, I told you about during the beginning of all this, all this whole thing, that setting up of Amotecon, they will face a lot, a lot of challenges. And this is just the beginning of those challenges. This is the beginning. And I want you, if you know a Yoruba person that you know as a friend, tag him to this video, especially prominent Yorubas. Forward this video to them. Forward this video to governors in Yoruba land. Forward this video to House of Assembly members in Yoruba land. Forward these videos to all politicians in Yoruba land. Not only in Yoruba land, to all southern part of Nigeria. Now, what you see these people say here is nothing but a direct threat and a declarance of, they have declared war on Yoruba people. And I have to tell you today that Yorubas cannot fight this war alone. Let us not look at it as, oh, now it is turn of Yoruba. No, 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 no. Every Southerner must come together and defend Yoruba land, irrespective of your differences. Every Southerner must come together and defend Yoruba land. This is not just about the Yoruba. Don't mock Yoruba people. Don't laugh at Yoruba people that because they participated in fighting Biafra war and they killed, your, and they killed Biafrans in their millions and all that, let it not be a reason to mock Yoruba people on these challenges that they are about to face. It is time we come together. The generation of these Yoruba people are not the generation that killed Biafrans. And it is time we align, we come to, uh, uh, together from the whole southern state of Nigeria should come together and defend Yoruba land and defend Yoruba people. Don't just say it is not your business. It is your business. If Yoruba is conquered today, if Lagos is conquered today, it is going to be a very difficult task for all the Biafrans. So it is not something we should overlook and it is not time to laugh at Yorubas. It is our business. So now, why I'm saying this is that these people wrote, they should spare no one. They should spare no one. They must fight an offensive and not defensive battle. You see? So 
It is not the Fulani are not asking their people to defend themselves. They are asking them to fight offensive and not defensive battle. Are you hearing that? And this war is coming. But this is not the people that planted the bomb. This is just a way to distract Nigeria so that we will start to we will start talking like the way I am talking now, and it will become the uh, the, uh, the the talk of the day. Forgetting that they were not the one who planted the bomb. The bomb was planted by the federal government of Nigeria on the order of the presidency and Abakaire. It is not these Fulani people, but this is the script they are acting so that everybody will begin to blame them because you know the federal government of Nigeria as it is today cannot go and arrest them. So this is not the first time they are making this kind of statement. So this is just a way to distract you from knowing the, where the, the attack is coming from. This is a way to distract you so that you will begin to think that these people have bombed the Lagos. It is not them. These people cannot bomb Lagos. The people that carried out this attack is federal government of Nigeria using these people as machinery, but not this particular organization of Fulanese that gave the statement. It was the uh, plan of the federal government planned in Aso Rock and dished in Lagos. Now, let me continue to read so that you understand what is going on. Everything must be used to fight back. We urge all faithful to prepare and be ready to ensure the battle takes place right in the home of the enemy. Fulani nationality movement. So they are telling you that the people, all the people that are loyal to them, they must be ready to make sure that the battle takes place in the home of the enemy. Of course, the battle has been taking place all along in the home of the enemy. Uh, Benue State is not the home of Fulani. They have killed people there. They have killed thousands of Nigerians there. Uh, Yoruba land is not the home of Fulani. They have killed a lot of Nigerians in Yoruba land. Biafra land is not the home of Fulani. They have killed a lot of people in, in uh, Biafra land. So the issue of taking the battle to the home uh, of the enemy is not, uh, is, not a good, is not a new news because that has been happening uh, a long time ago. Now, and listen, nobody has arrested these people. Nobody has proscribed them. Are you people, are you people following? Now, I want to tell you the biggest scam, the biggest scam today in the history of Nigeria. And you people are watching, are following me. I want to review to you the biggest scam in the history of Nigeria. And this is what every Southern, what I'm about to show you now, what I'm about to discuss now is something that every Southern, every Southern, it is not Biafra. It is not Oduduwa. Every Southerner from the Nigeria Southern part must pay attention and let this be an issue. What I'm about to discuss now should be an issue of discussion in House of Assembly, in, in Government House, in the whole of West, uh, South, uh, Southern part of Nigeria. This issue I'm about to discuss now. Now, watch this. One moment. One moment. Now, look at this. What you are looking at now, what you are looking at now is the former governor of Borono State. His name is Shetima. Shetima is his name. I want you people to open your mind and read what this thing say. Northern states move against retaliatory attack or maybe let me not stand let me not start from here let me start from here let me start from here let me start from here now the picture you are looking at now is, uh, the, uh, is the picture of the northern governors the northern governors 
in Nigeria. I did not say, I did not say the Northeast governors. I did not say the Northwest governors. I did not say the uh, Middle Belt governors. I said this picture you are looking at now is the picture of Northern governors. Now, look at this. Tag Northern Governors Forum. This Northern Governors Forum you see here is something everybody from southern part of Nigeria should pay attention to. And it is time we begin to talk sense into the southern people, Yoruba people, Biafra people, and what have you. It is time you open your eye. You see this thing you see on that screen. Northern Governors Forum is the biggest scam in the history of Nigeria. It is the biggest scam and fraud against every other ethnic group in Nigeria. And not only, not only that, not only that this is the biggest fraud, but even the people of the middle belt of Nigeria falls the biggest victim of this scam you just saw on that screen called the Northern Governors Forum. It is time we have Southern Governors Forum and not Southeast Governors Forum and not Southwest Governors Forum, and not South-South Governors Forum. It should be the Southern Governors Forum. And this is the biggest fraud in the history of Nigeria. So, as I'm talking to you today, do you know the strategy they have used? They have grabbed all the middle belt to join this, govern this Northern Governors. You don't have Middle Belt Governors Forum, do you? Even if you have. <coughs> even if you have, I'm not aware of that. But even if you have, let us even assume you have. The, not, the, 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 the Middle Belt Governors Forum. I don't think you have anything like that. But what you have is what we call Northern Governors Forum. And I have been researching on this for a very long time. And a brother reminded me today. Now, it is time I discuss because I have been, I am loaded on this. So, what they did was a systematic fraud to capture the middle belt of Nigeria. And as I'm talking to you, I have never had anybody in Nigeria, including from president down to House of Assembly member, discussing this issue. That the governor of Plateau State, Plateau, governor of Plateau State is the chairman of Northern Governors Forum, elected in May 2019. Just Plateau State. Now, you should be asking yourself, why is Northerners, why are Northern people, why did they carve the Middle Belt and all the governors of the 19 states of the North come together to form what they called Northern Governors Forum and you not, and you did not, you do not have the same thing in the southern part of Nigeria to come together South South Governors Forum. Why? Because they come to plant seed of discord among you people, among Yorubas, among Igbos, the Biafrans, and then among the other our he just Biafra, he just speaking Biafra and the Bibio speaking Biafra. And and then they begin to divide you. Meanwhile, in the north, there is nothing like Northeast Governors Forum. They what they have, and whenever any killings and this idea, this fraud you see here. This fraud you see here, this fraud you see here is nothing but only 
a systematic way so that when Fulanese are killing people in Jos, in Palatu State, it is going to be discussed under the Northern Governors Forum. And guess what? They have always condemned every, every, they have always come to threat everybody that have any contrary view, any contrary view in the killings of Christians in places like Jos, for example. And the governor of Jos happened to be the chairman of this Northern Governors Forum. Now, let me read a little bit about this article so that you people understand where I am coming from. Now, governors of the 19 Northern states are meeting in Kaduna today to discuss issues that affect the region and chart the way forward. Are you people listening? They, are, they met in Kaduna to discuss the issues that affect the region. They did not say the Northeast Middle Belt or Northwest or North South. They say the region, which is not. And by doing so, they have dragged, they have uh, 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 indirectly and dubiously and fraudulently dragged Plateau State to belong to North. Meanwhile, according to what the Nigeria Constitution, what they fraudulently divided, Plateau State falls under the Middle Belt, which is Benue State, Federal Capital Territory, Kwara State, Kogi State, Niger State, Nasarawa State, and then uh, Plateau State. But with this, with this thing I am reading to you today, there it is only the Middle Belt. Middle Belt is not ex in existence. Middle Belt. You see the Middle Belt we are talking about? They have already taken Middle Belt by proxy. It is not in existence. So, they, 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 made, they made sure that they made the, the uh, chairman, the, the, uh, the, the um, uh, Plateau State Governor, the chairman of this Northern Governors Forum. For a purpose. A purpose in the sense that they don't want anybody to suspect any decision concerning the region. And what is the region? The region is the north, the northern region. They don't want anybody to suspect that somebody from uh, northwest or northeast is the chairman. So for that reason, they will be suspecting that all the decisions he will be doing will favor only the core northerners. But that is a lie. The truth is that the on purpose, gave the chairmanship to this plateau state man so that they will continue to manipulate and manhandle him if possible. And the decision that they are going to be reaching will always be jeopardizing the security of those in plateau state and other middle belt state. It is not to protect them. Which is the reason why you will see after the attack in Plateau State, the governors of the North, of the North, the Northern Governors Forum, comprising this middle belt, will come together to discuss how to approach the security issues. And have asked yourself, has it ever yielded any result? The answer is no. It has never yielded any result. Never. It has never yielded any result. And it will never yield any result because the people that are behind the killing are from the Northeast and the Northwest. And they are part of the Governors Forum, of the Northern Governors Forum, controlling the internal politics of the Northern Governors Forum. That is why the governor of, of, a, of a Plateau State have no power. He cannot say anything to deal decisively with the Fulanists that have been killing people in Joss. I'm just using just as example. But I'm telling you now the middle belt. So now, I want you to continue to follow me as I read this. As I read this thing so that you understand the fraud. This is the highest fraud so far in Nigeria. And it is time Yorubas, it is time the Igbos, it is time everybody from the south wake up to see this impunity and try immediately to correct this impunity by having dissolved 
every governor's forum from the southeast and south whatever and you people have to immediately institute and come together and have what we call southern governor's forum enough is enough now at the meeting which is holding in Kaduna state in Kaduna State Government House, the governors are expected to discuss issues of security, economic growth, regional integration, poverty, education problem, among other challenges ravaging the northern region. Are you hearing? Are you seeing that? Ravaging the northern region. Northern region. In attendance so far are the chairman of the forum, governor, governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong. Governor of Nasarawa State and Jigawa State, as well as the Deputy Governor of Sokoto, uh, Kaduna, Bauchi, and Benue State. Are you seeing that? They have dragged Benue State also into this Northern Governors Forum. You see why uh, Orutum cannot do anything. Are you people seeing it? You see why Orutum of Benue State is handicapped. You, did you see that? He is handicapped because he is being controlled by the not who are sending Fulanis to kill his people. And then after killing the, after killing the people in Benue State, he ran back to this governor's forum, which are the people sponsoring the killing in his state. And the idea is to overrun all Nigeria. Are you people seeing that? Now, let us continue. So, the Northern State Governor's Forum the Northern State Governors Forum is chaired by the Plateau State Governor, Simon Lalong, who was elected during their meeting early this year. Of course, this is like 2019 report. In, the, in his opening remark, before the meeting went into, clo into closed door, you see, they are having closed door meeting with the people that are sponsoring their killers. Mr. Lalong said the meeting was summoned for the governors to deliberate and take a common position. Are you seeing that? To take a common position. And this is where the problem lies. To take a common, a common position. To take a, pomo, a common uh, position. And this common position is not only on, life, on, uh, on the issue of livestock management, like you see here. It is not only on the issue of livestock management in the country, which he notes has generated controversy, misinformation, and politicization uh, among various stakeholders, as well as to develop best way to keen into federal government national livestock transformation plan. You see it? You see? So, and this is exactly the way they are discussing security issues in Benue State. This is the way they are discussing security issues in Joss. So whenever the killing occurred, they will come together like this and they are looking for common position. And guess what? Guess what? The people of the north are bigger than the people of the middle belt that comprises this Northern Governors Forum. And this scam has been going on for ages and Nigerians are not aware or thinking that line think it was that line you see but hey this is also not what i want to tell you now i want to show you the effect of this northern northern governors forum on you nigerians listen and watch now this is them. What you are looking at now is, I'm not, of course, I am not going to start telling you the damages. I'm not going to start telling you the damages this Northern Governors Forum has done on other parts of Nigeria. I'm not going to tell you all. But I'm going to bring one or two issues so that you will understand what has been going on in Nigeria. The point is that they connived with themselves and then see how they, they uh, uh, fraudulently included the middle belt of Nigeria into the governor's forum so that it is going to be the northern governor, the north, 
You see how the political decision that is affecting you as a southerner is being done? This is 19 states, 19 state governors coming together to deliberate on issues and have common purpose, common purpose. And they are coming to common position on every security issues affecting Nigeria, 19 northern states. Now, you have the Yoruba state. They have different opinion because the South has been divided. You have the Southeast governors. They have different opinions on issue because they have been divided. You have the South-South governors. They have different opinion on national issue because they have been divided. You see that? But when you come to North, they grabbed the middle belt and they become one, 19 states, and they make decision. And anybody that threaten the national, uh, uh, anybody that threaten the president from the North, these people, these Northern people, even without, even when the governor of Plateau State is not happy with the decision, the collective decision of the Northern governors, even when the Benue State governor is not happy with the collective decision of this Northern Governors Forum, he has no choice than to abide by it. Isn't it? Even where they are not happy. So that is the reason why you will see the Northern Governors Forum has been a mechanism used by the presidency to suppress every other region. Now, listen to this as I read. This is part, this is the part of, this is one of their job to make sure they threaten anybody that comes against or along the line to threaten any presidents or whatever their interest is. Like you can see, Northern governors send message to Pastor Adeboy. The Northern state, and this is March 20, as you can see, this is this this is today. This thing I'm reading to you now is today, 28th of March 2020. They send message to Pastor Adeboy. Even when Governor of Benue State may not be happy with this, but he is part of it and he has they have given the statement. Even when the governor of Plateau State may not be happy for this, he is part of it and he has assented to it. Now the Northern State Governor Forum on Sunday commended the impact of the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Enoch Adeboye, on, people's, uh, on people as he clocked 78 years on Monday. The Forum Chairman, Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau, gave the commendation in a statement by his, by his district or that by Director of Press and Public Affairs, Dr. Macha Makut in Joss. Why congratulating Pastor Adeboye on his 78th birthday, Lalong described him as a man of God who is rendering uh, fervent service to God and humanity. He added that Adeboye had been impacting people's life through education, healthcare, infrastructure, empowerment, and entrepreneurship using the various outreach and programs of the church. The labor of Pastor Adeboye in the Lord's vineyard over his many years of preaching and evangelism clearly set him apart as a vessel of honor, he said. He noted that he noted uh, he noted that God has used Adeboye God have used Adeboye to touch the lives of the people, not only in Nigeria, but in the world at large. Let me stop here. Do you know why I read this? Do you people know why I read this? You have seen that the Northern Governors Forum are sending this message to Adeboye because Adeboye has not been vocal in condemning the present government. But watch what I'm about to show you now. Watch this. Now, watch this. 
This is the reason why the Northern Governors Forum was instituted. This, this is the reason. The Northern State moves against retaliatory attack. The Northern Governors Forum yesterday said measures had been put in place to avert reprisal in the region following alleged attack on their kinsmen in River State and part of the East. Are you people seeing that? They are claiming that they, are, they, they have decided to warn the Fulanese to not go on reprisal attack in River State and part of the East where they have been attacked. Now, the assurance which followed the recent killing in, uh, in Oyimbo, as of the state, was given by the high power delegation led by the forum chairman and chief Exec executive of Borono State, Kashim Shetima, during, the visit, during a visit uh, to Governor Nelson White Nwike in River State, Port Harcourt. Other in the, in the team were Governor Amin Ubelo, Masari Katsina, Amin Waziri Sokoto, Atiku Bugu Kebi, and Simon uh, Lalong of Plateau. Shetima commended Wike for taking urgent step to nip the conflict in, in, the, in the mood, informing that their visit was to, soli so to solidarize with him. Governor Wike, we are proud of you. We are associating ourselves with you. Nigeria is greater than political differences. We belong to one political family, and that is the Federal Republic of Nigeria. No interest should be bigger than it. You believe in the Nigeria project. For that, we remain internally grateful, he said. You see that? I'm still coming to the biggest one. Now, they are telling Wike of River State that they have come to make sure that the river people or you know, uh, river people didn't kill Fulani uh, Hesman in River State. And again, they are telling Wike that they have come because he believes in Nigeria project. And now, Governor Wike, which I, I, I know you are a very powerful and a very good governor at the moment. Do you think that after listening and reasoning the way I'm reasoning now, you will not begin to make move now for the unification of the Southern Nigeria? Have you not seen that you have been cheated? This is not just about the Igbos. This is not just about the Biafrans. But the entire 19 northern states are making coming to you a river state to make sure you, you discuss a, 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 a reprisal attack with them. And it is not the governors from the northeast. It is not the governors from the northwest. It is not the governors from the uh, north central, what is it called? But it is the northern governors forum that came to you. But when you come to the south, you want to grab your own. And these people are dealing with you all. This is the reason. What can you do? The invasion of Yoruba land from Lagos now. They have started from Lagos. These people you see, these governors you see, will make sure they see the day and the light of conquering Lagos state of Yoruba land. It is time. Politics apart. Differences apart. It is time the Southern Nigeria come together and end this fraud called Northern Nigeria uh, uh, Governor Forum. Now, I want to also show you the threat. How they dish out threat. How they dish out the threat. Because, like I said, they are the one that are being used by by the they are the one that are being used by the uh, uh, by the uh, let me show you by the federal government to to perpetrate this uh, this uh, heinous uh, crime. Now, when you look at this. You will see that everything you see here, 
Everything you see here, you are seeing Northern Governors Forum. Everything you see here is Northern Governors Forum. One moment. One moment. Just one moment. Maybe uh, so. Anyway, let me not waste. Let me not take much of your time. But but I'm going to uh, 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 bring the, those uh, reports I wanted to show you. It is taking me time to find. So the point now. What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say now. Even this Northern Governors Forum, they threatened the South East Governors at a point. They issued a threat to the no, to the South East Governors. At a point, and that threat is what I am looking for. I'm going to, I'm going to bring it on. Maybe not today, but my in my next uh, broadcast. So, what I'm saying now is that it is time for the Southerners to begin to think along the line of this information I have passed to you today. There is nothing like North East, North West, and Middle Belt. They have Northern Governors Forum. And it is time the Southerners come together and safeguard the Southern Nigeria. Lagos is under siege. As I'm talking to you, a lot of things will be happening in Lagos in a matter of weeks. This bomb you see that exploded now, it is not only there have more of them that are coming in different ways. It might not be bomb. The next might not be bomb. But they have, they have come out to take over Lagos. And Yorubas cannot do it alone. Yorubas cannot do it alone. And I want to tell you all, those of you that are blaming Amoteko, where is Amoteko when the bomb exploded? There is difference between this, uh, getting this kind of intelligence that a bomb is being planted somewhere and intelligence of that is full of knees somewhere trying to invade villages. These are two different intelligence uh, things. So you don't expect uh, Amoteko to, to know that somebody is going to throw bomb in your backyard. No. But when there is evidence and when there are presence of Fulanese in a particular area, of course, everybody will raise alarm that are Fulanese, that are Fulanese, then people will know. But this kind of planting bombs, it is something even, it is something that you don't, as a place like Nigeria, that are not well developed to know, you know, especially in intelligence system. They don't, you can't uh, blame Amoteko. Uh, you think Amoteko will see somebody planting bomb and they will allow the bomb to explode? No. That is that is a that is a lie, and of course these people are mocking Amoteko. Where is Amoteko? Where is Amoteko? Tell them to come and attack Yoruba land like they have been attacking before. That is what we are looking at. Let them come and attack Yoruba villages, Yoruba farm, farmland, like they have been attacking and killing women and raping women in Yoruba land before. That they cannot do again. That is one. So when they have adopted this tactics of throwing bomb, we will still come to see how to start addressing it. So, but don't allow Yorubas to fight this alone in Lagos. Lagos is under siege and they are trying everything to take over Lagos. And remember that it is not only Yoruba, it is not only Biafrans that have properties in Lagos. Yorubas also have properties in Lagos. So don't think that it is only, uh, it is only Biafrans that are suffering. 
Biafrans, it is not only Biafrans that are suffering. Yorubas are suffering as well. So it, this whole thing is not just about Biafra, Biafra, Biafra. It is a, a, it is a war that has been declared against Southern Nigeria. It is not just about Biafra. It is not just about the Igbos. It is a war that has been declared against the Southern Nigeria. And we must come together to fight and finish this war. And make sure we reclaim our land, reclaim our properties, and save life and properties, save life of our children, our women, and vulnerable people around us. Thank you this evening, and have a wonderful weekend. My birthday is tomorrow, and I'm already celebrating from this evening indoor because nobody can go out. Thank you for joining me, and see you, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I will probably come online tomorrow to see if I can have video video chat with most of you, if that is possible. If it is not possible, then we'll see how we can make we can make video calls. I want to see all your faces, most of you. Thank you for staying with me this evening and good night. Have a nice weekend.